All right, folks, welcome back for another Soul Driven interview. Today, I am so excited to introduce you to our guest, someone who has made a real difference in my life and I know is going to make a difference in yours. So to kick things off, I'd like to introduce you to Brad Yates, EFT tapping expert who's been working in the industry more than 20 years. Welcome to Soul Driven, Brad. Oh, thanks so much, Anna. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm super excited. I feel like I have been having conversations with you while watching your tapping videos. <laughs> so now I just get to be like, wait a minute, why do you do this? Why do you do this? What's the deal here? Because I'm always so curious about the working, like the inner workings of things. So um, I'm really excited to talk with you today about a number of different topics. But to kind of kick things off, I always ask my guests, what makes you soul driven? Yeah, and and you told me ahead of time that question was going to come, and it's, and I thought, I don't know what makes me that way. It just sort of is. I, I just feel like I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Like it's it's my job, you know. I I work for the big guy upstairs, uh, whatever that is for anybody. Um, but it's like, okay, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just kind of go with the gut feeling of this feels right. This feels like it would make a difference. And th this feels helpful. So it's just kind of, I, I, if, if I, if, you know, if I, if I am soul driven and I, I love that way you phrase that. And it's like, yes, I think I am. It's because that's just how it, how it works. And I think that ultimately all of us are, but we have roadblocks. We're soul driven, but we have roadblocks. And so, it's, you know, that's how I do what I do is by helping people clear out the roadblocks so that they can be more soul driven, because I can't imagine a life that's more fulfilling or enjoyable. Completely agree. Do you think that you were always soul driven or was it something that you came to? Oh, I had lots of roadblocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, did you always yeah. have like this, this like spiritual sense about you that like you had to follow? I, and I would, at some level, I, you know, I've just kind of felt guided in certain ways. I wouldn't say that a lot of the play, ways that I felt guided or, or the actions that I took and choices that I made would always be defined as soul driven. <laughs> There were a lot of ego. Might not be Cuban if they were. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, well, you know, sometimes you hear these people go, well, at five years old, I knew that I was special and I was doing this. I'm like, yeah, no, that wasn't my path. <laughs> <laughs> I was very much ego driven in, uh, in a lot of the things that, that I did. And, you know, but I, I think there's always been a guiding force. I've gotten off track myself. I, it was really when I, I met my wife and she was running a homeless shelter and really introduced me to this idea of service in a way that I hadn't looked at. And that was when things really started shifting for me. I love that. That's really cool. I um, went to journalism school and um, the homelessness was one of my beats. And that was such an eye-opening world to dive mm -hmm. into and to get to know. Um, a lot of really interesting and beautiful things came out of that experience. Of course, there was, you know, a lot of sadness as well. But then so many, so many beautiful things in the midst of that. Um, that's really cool. So you have a, a very interesting background. I, cracked me up when I'm like, he was an actor, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a doctor, but I played one on TV. <laughs> Before you came to tapping. So I'd love to know like a bit about your background and what brought you to, you know, to becoming a tapping wizard, tapping expert. We, we couldn't figure out exactly yeah. what that title was. <laughs> what, what to call me. Yeah. How does a grown man find himself tapping on his face for a living? <laughs> I, yeah. So I, I, I was an actor. I had done right from, from kindergarten was doing, you know, school plays and uh, doing it through high school, went to college and got a degree in drama, went to England and studied acting over there, uh, then traveled the world doing theater and went to Hollywood to be a movie star. And it was there that I, uh, while I was in LA, that I met my wife 
and fell in love, got married. And when our first child was on the way, I thought, you know, I might need a backup career to support my family. <laughs> so I'd always been fascinated with the power of the mind and been interested in hypnotherapy. So I saw this ad for a hypnotherapy school. I thought, cool, I'm going to go do that. You know, because having your own private practice is a guaranteed nine to five income to support a family. <laughs> but that's, you know, where I was guided and started building a, a small hypnotherapy practice alongside continuing my acting career. And a couple of years later, when our second child was on the way, I realized that as much as I loved acting, doing this personal development work was really my calling. It's really what felt important to me and, and felt right. And so we decided to leave Los Angeles at that time and move to Northern California where all of our family was. And while I was at, when we got up there, I heard from some other hypnotherapists that I was in touch with about this energy psychology thing and this tapping thing that people were doing. And hey, there's this conference going on in Las Vegas. And I thought, I'm open-minded. I will go and check this out. And went to a training with Gary Craig, the founder of EFT. And it's this process of tapping on your face. For anyone who's watching this and doesn't know what EFT is, it's, you, it's using these acupuncture points and you're tapping with your fingertips on these same points you use in acupuncture. And it looks a little strange. Now, remember, I'd been an actor. And while I was an actor, I had gone to Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey Clown College. So strange things were not you know, <laughs> difficult for me. <laughs> so I had that benefit going into it. And what really sold me was when he... Uh, at one point in the workshop, he passed around Hershey's Kisses and said, okay, on a scale of zero to 10, how much do you want this chocolate? And I was a bit of a chocoholic at the time. And I'm like, eight, nine, can I eat it now? He said, okay, so let's just tap, even though I really want this chocolate, it's going to taste so good. Yum, 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 yum. And after a couple of moments, he said, now, how much do you want the chocolate? And I'm like, zero. He said, you know, un unwrap it and take a bite. And it was disgusting to me. I could not eat that chocolate. I didn't eat chocolate for two years after that. No, oh. don't, don't anyone worry. I, I recovered. I, I, I get better. But uh, you just really want the secret sauce. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but in that moment, to go from that chocolate craving to not being able to eat it, I'm like, hmm, there's something interesting about this process. And then the, the whole weekend at that uh, conference was interesting to. There was a spoon bending workshop and I'd always been interested in, the, in that. And I bent all kinds of silverware and <laughs> it was like, wow, there's this whole energy thing is wild. So when I got back, I started uh, in my next hypnotherapy session at the very end, like five minutes to the end, it's like, hey, we got a couple more minutes. Uh, I wanna try this thing with you where we, we do this tapping. And little by little, they became tapping sessions with a little bit of hypnosis at the end because I, I just loved how uh, I could use this process in helping people shift their mindset about different things. And, and then YouTube came along and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if there was a YouTube video that people could start their day with? And as far as I know, there weren't any other tapping videos on YouTube at the time. And I thought, uh, I'll call it tap of the morning. And that's all I was gonna do was just that one video, put that out there. Hey, now people can tap and, uh, on YouTube. And it was like six months later that I thought, oh, I should really have a tap of the evening. So I shot another video. And then a couple months later, another one. And then now there's over a thousand videos. <laughs> so, there we are. <laughs> that's incredible. I, I wasn't familiar that uh, with your hypnotherapy background, but that's really cool. And also the chocolate thing, I, I think that that's such a tangible way to see immediate change and about something that, you know, you really had a connection to that connection being uh, not severed necessarily, but certainly broken for a period of time is quite interesting. It makes it um, controllable. So yeah. that if I can decide, you know, I, you know what, I'm going to take a break from sugar for a while. And it's not a matter of willpower. So there can be sugar in the house. And I remember uh, it was an Easter or something like that. And I was doing a sugar fast and just tapped, cleared the cravings so that there were um, Easter candy or maybe it was uh, Girl Scout cookies or something. 
And I, I just walk right past it. There's no, you can't have it. You can't have it. You're on a sugar fast. It's like, it, it just doesn't look like food to me. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. That's, I mean, as someone who loves sugar, I'm, my brain's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and who's constantly struggling with less sugar um, because it's, it doesn't serve me. I don't think it serves anyone quite frankly, processed sugar specifically, yeah. but no, we can, we can do that. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm a nicer and kinder human being <laughs> sends sugar. Um, <laughs> anyway, so one of the things I think that you already kind of illustrated it beautifully, but as I mentioned at the very beginning of this, when I came across your work, it was, um, I was actually listening to a podcast and someone randomly mentioned this like million dollar tapping video and they, <laughs> they didn't say your name. And I was like, for whatever reason, it really grabbed me. And I'm, I'm familiar with tapping. I've done some myself, um, learned a little bit, but, um, but it's, it's, uh, it, it, for whatever reason, it really jumped out to me. And um, I am just like in the midst of only about, I think, what, eight months in now to building my third business. And it's a business like I've never built before. I'm a really practical person. I had a marketing agency and here I've got this spiritual guide. Like it's just, it's really been messing with my mind and <laughs> finances and, and like this big shift has been really difficult for me and it jumped out for me. And so I was like, cool. I Googled and a couple of videos came up, but um, I grabbed yours and I loved your approach in that it was like, yes, I'm tapping, you know, for this million dollar, however much, um, but it's, it's more about so that I can do what I want to do and I can give back to the world. And so it's this circular energetic flow versus what I have seen some of in the tapping community is more just like affirmations, you know, like I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. I'm, and like, I'm not, you know, I am not a person who's driven by money, um, but freedom is my number one value. So <laughs> yes. I gotta have it. Um, <laughs> plus in, I in like the, doing in the society that do. we live in, it is kind <laughs> of necessary and it's, and it's not bad. We, you can be soul driven and still be very wealthy. <laughs> and that's totally. the thing is a lot of people don't see that. It's like, you're either money driven or you're soul driven. Right. It's like, let's, let's, and that's what my tapping videos on that are about is, is clearing that misunderstanding and recognizing, wow, as a soul driven person, I can really use that money well. <laughs> well, I, I think that, yeah, you make a very good point. I don't know that I had ever in my head looked at it like I could be one or the other, but I realized in 2020, I have some serious hangups with money and I needed to start working on that. Um, and when I found your video, I kind of started, I was like, okay, this felt really good. And this was fun. If I had a million dollars, I was like going around my house, singing it to my partner. He was like, what? <laughs> um, but I, did, I was like, okay, I'm gonna give this 30 days. And why not, right? It's like a nine, 10 minute video. And I'm just curious because I definitely felt the energetic shift for sure. And I really aligned with everything you said. And so I put a couple of videos together and it was amazing. It was like within just a couple of days, things started shifting for me. And then I started kind of seeing this like shift into my confidence was also changing. Yeah. And the way I felt with myself and over the past, see, I started this in November and over the past several months, it is just, it's amazing to me what, what has shifted in regards to not only my relationship to money, uh, the way that I look at money, the flow of money coming into my life. Um, but it has affected other areas where like, I interact differently with my clients. I am able to, you know, when someone contacts me about a reading, um, I don't stress about, oh my gosh, are they going to hire me or are they going to book me? You know, I, I'm just like, cool, I'll answer your question. It's all good. Um, and I'm, I'm really curious to understand a little bit of like where this comes from. Like, 
there's so many questions I have about this. So I guess first kind of my, my question is, what is it about money that, that like, why do we, well, I, we have a lot of conditioning. There's a million reasons why we have money hangups <laughs> and money is just energy, but I'd love for you to explain to us that, that relationship there. Cause you created this money beyond belief program. This is certainly one of your, you know, one of your specialties. And I'd love just to hear about tapping and, and finances and, and what that's about. Yeah. So the extent to which we are not experiencing what we want in terms of financial abundance or health or joyful relationships tends to be the extent to which we're resisting it because these things are possible. They're available. Um, I, I know that with certain things, there are some things that are not as in our control as we'd like them to be. And, and health can be one of those things. Um, but especially with finances, the extent to which we don't have the money we want tends to be the extent to which we're resisting it. And people will say, I'm not resisting it. And I beg to differ <laughs> because we do, money has gotten a bad rap. Most of us, it's almost impossible to, you know, live in this world and not have heard some bad news about money you know, that people with money are greedy, that you can only make money through doing wrong things or working yourself to death. There's no, there's no healthy, joyful, positive way to get rich, according to the, the stories that most people have passed down. You know, people are taught, well, that's for other people. Our family doesn't have that. We're salt of the earth. We're, you know, there are things that it's noble to not have money. So there's all of these different stories and, and many people aren't even aware of what they are. Uh, I was, I think it was, may have been in that program, Money Beyond Belief, where I was tapping with someone on the idea of um, money is the root of all evil. And she started crying. She didn't, you know, not on a daily basis, thinking to herself, just remember money is the root of all evil, but it had been ingrained in her. And most people didn't realize that's not even what the, the phrase is. <laughs> The, the translation into English, as it's given, is the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So it's like, yeah, greed causes all kinds of problems. That's how it translates out. Not that money does these things. But, but as kids, when we've learned these things, we're not able to go, mom, when you say this, is that really what it is? <laughs> you know, sure. We just take... We take that in and it levels that we're not even aware of. So we could sit there, go out through the day going, ah, I hope I can make more money. Hope I can make more money. Hope I can make more money. Oh, I forgot to uh, call that person who had a job offer for me. Huh, I wonder how that happened. Because I'm trying to resist the money that I believe will cause problems in my life. So if having more money would make me a bad person or put me in danger, because as soon as someone finds out that I have more than $25,000 in my bank account, they're going to kidnap me or they're going to come and break into my house or whatever. And, and we each have that number in our head. <laughs> as soon as I make that amount, I will no longer be safe. You know, it's that people talk about the financial thermostat. Yeah. So what happens is that when we then have an opportunity to do something that could lead to greater financial abundance, the amygdala in our brain that looks for threats and tells us to go into fight or flight when we're in danger sees that and says, oh, that would lead to more money. It's game time. <laughs> Let's have a stress response. And I will either feel really uncomfortable or it will be so subtle that I will just forget to make that phone call. And I will, uh, I will miss that opportunity. And I'll, then I'll beat myself up about that and go, oh, I'm so stupid, I had this opportunity. But secretly, I'm thinking, I dodged that bullet. And so we're going through this throughout. And so it's recognized, okay, what is that resistance? What is that fear that causes that stress response? And if only we had a good way of dealing with stress. Hmm. <laughs> that's what, and that's what tapping is. It's, it's stress relief. So as we think about money, we can calm down that stress response and say, 
you know what, it's actually okay. And money is not the root of all evil. And there are a lot of people making a lot of money doing really good work and then using that money to do really good things. And I could be a part of that. And so it's actually much better for me to have a lot of money. And so we're able to change our mind and break down that resistance that has kept us stuck all, all this time. And it's really, um, it's, it's just been wild to me how like the last, I think six months or so, I've really been coming to view the human body as a computer you know, and seeing the many different ways in which we can reprogram ourselves. And that's what tapping is doing essentially, correct? And it's also, how does, is it like, is it so effective because you're tapping on these points and then releasing this energy while you're saying things like positive things? Like how does that, how does that work? Yeah, and the the exact mechanics of, of why tapping works is still being figured <laughs> out. We have a lot of theories. Yeah. You know, originally it was based on acupuncture and you know, thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they said there's energy flowing through these meridians. And when the energy gets stuck, things don't work so well. So you stick needles in these key points to get the energy flowing naturally again. Oh, wait, we can just tap with our fingers, get the same effect, get that energy flowing naturally and we feel better. We have a growing body of scientific research showing that the tapping reduces uh, cortisol levels in our bodies, the stress hormone. Uh, it affects the, the vagus nerve, so the polyvagal system that uh, um, modulates emotions and things like that. Uh, there's, uh, we can find that the, the points that we use are points of, you know, even though they've been used in acupuncture for thousands of years before they could identify this, we now have ways of seeing that these are points of lower electrical resistance. And when we tap, it, it's a process called piezoelectricity. And the compression of these of the nerves in these points sends an electrical signal to the brain that's a calming signal. So it calms the brain down. So there are all these different ways. It may be one of those and the others just sound like good theories. It may be all of them. But the, the basic result is that it's a calming down of the stress system. So when we're looking at these things like money or whatever else it might be that we want but are not getting, looking at, okay, that's because there's some resistance, there's some fear there, that, that fear is a stress response. So if I'm calming that stress response down, I can now look at it and see, that was a misunderstanding. What I thought was so scary is not scary at all. I love and that. And that creates all kinds of openings. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, one of the things that I really saw um, pretty quickly was just how connected it is to self-worth like especially oh, yeah. finances and i'm really curious about this connection because i wouldn't have thought i mean obviously if you don't feel good about yourself you're not going to want to go out and get a job or you know you may not feel worthy of whatever job but like to see finances so interrelated with self-worth self-love those things just really blew my mind yeah. um and i loved i think one of your videos you're like so i realized that my real job is actually just like <laughs> teaching people how to like love, love themselves things. right and i was like yep. yes i know yeah. <laughs> so what what is that connection <sighs> or what do you think that connection is yeah. i guess we have we we have uh, unfortunately too many of us have a lot of programming about our worth and it's usually not, no, you're worth everything. <laughs> uh, we have all kinds of messages that have been said to us bluntly, or it's just been inferred. And it may just be our own interpretation of events telling us I'm not good enough. Yeah. And if I'm not good enough, why would anybody give me money? Why should I have nice things? I'm not worthy and deserving of that. If I put myself out there, I'm only going to disappoint people. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to, you know, show up and put my services out there? Hi, I'm open for business. You're really going to be disappointed, but I hope you'll come and give me some money anyway. <laughs> you know, it's like we're constantly waving people off, telling them, no, don't even bother. We're, and, and we don't realize it. We sit there going, you know, it's like we've got those... Um, those flashlights they use on the runway, you know, saying, don't land here, don't land here. We're out there going, 
why isn't anybody showing up? Why is my business so bad? <laughs> and it's that because of feelings of not, not being worthy. I think it's probably the number one issue for most folks is not feeling good enough. And it's such a misunderstanding. We are magnificent children of the universe and we are worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. And there's so much evidence of that if we allow ourselves to pay attention. Like right now, everybody, you're breathing. The universe is saying you are worthy and deserving of this oxygen. And we can say, oh, but that's just oxygen. Yeah, try going without it. It is <laughs> vital. It is far more <laughs> vital than any amount of money. And a fee. Yeah. Or help. So, you know, you can go outside and you can look up at a beautiful sky, you know, look at the sky at night and see the stars. The universe is saying, yes, it is here for you. You're already worthy and deserving. The rest is just misunderstandings. But then we get an identity about that and it feels safer to play within that realm. I'm afraid of stepping out and being seen more. I'm afraid of making more money. I'm afraid of those expectations because I had this doubt about my worthiness. Mm. And so I'm gonna play in this small area because otherwise when I try to go outside of that, there's like this electrical fence and I have that stress response. Again, we just start dapping and going, okay, let me look at that. And we start to have a greater awareness of, okay, that is a misunderstanding. It's either mine or somebody else's. Tell me that. And we also have a lot of programming about money and worth. You know, you deserve, you deserve your allowance this week, or you don't deserve your allowance. Yeah. Look at those people in the news. They don't deserve that money. And it's all about worth. And it's like, the universe doesn't care. There are people doing really good work, making a lot of money, and there are people hurting people making money. It's not money's fault. <laughs> and the universe is like, the money is just there. The sun shines on everybody, regardless of their behavior. The abundance is there. And so it's our interpretation, our, our misinterpretation about our worth that we then decide, well, if I feel I'm not good enough, I therefore am not allowed to have money. And we want to we want to clear that out, and and so that's why as as we tap on money, and you can you're saying you you know find yourself going, wow, I, my money situation is getting better, and I'm feeling better about myself, huh? Yeah, there's it's not a coincidence. It's <laughs> that I mean ultimately everything is interrelated in some way. Well, it's just fascinating to me because, um, like in my own work with with my 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 spiritual team, if you will, um, they're constantly bringing me back to to self, to self worth, to loving myself. You know, I'm like, I want to do this and I want to do that, and I got this plan and that plan. And they're like, that's awesome, that's great, but this <laughs> needs work. <laughs> You know, right. I, I grew up in a, in a family where achieving uh, really equaled love. And so all of my siblings, I mean, we we're all like, what did you do? Or what did you do? You know, like um, mm -hmm. we're just high achievers. We want to succeed. We want to do the thing. Um, and I have really been getting broken over that over the past couple of years. It's been good for me. But um, in that, I think it's, it's been fascinating to see that also in tapping. So would your recommendation really be then like start with self-love and then the money will come versus just start with money? Not that you couldn't get to the same place, but that just kind of like the root of it will kind of get you wherever you want to go. Well, and it, it will, because if you think about someone that you really love, you want the best for them, right? Totally. <laughs> So if you really love yourself, you're going to want the best for yourself. It's like, yeah, I love myself too much to, to live in deprivation. <laughs> I, want, I want to have nice things. I, and I love myself enough to want to make that possible for myself. If I just go for the money without the self-love, you know, the results are going to not be ideal. Uh, you know, we, there are plenty of people out there breaking their backs to make money or cutting corners and doing harm in order to make money. They're not the happiest people. Mm -hmm. So what, what we ultimately want is to have a joyful life. And we think the money is going to be what gives it to us. Well, I'm unhappy right now, but I have enough money to buy myself some nice things. You know, when I have that private jet, uh, then I'll be happy. Well, there's plenty of examples out there that that doesn't 
lead to happiness. But if I really love myself, I love myself when I'm on the ground or when I'm in my private jet. And it's, and it's okay, you know, and if a private jet is what I want, great, that's fine. And I will make it possible for myself, but in a way that, that feels soul driven as opposed to ego driven. And that's the thing is, and we have, but we have this, this fear that we have to be motivated by misery. If I'm not embarrassed by my sister saying, you know, I did this, what did you do? Then I'm not going to achieve something as opposed to, but again, if we clear the resistance to achieving, you know, if I go, well, I want to, I want to win the gold medal because I want to find out what I'm capable of. I want to go out and give my absolute best because I feel really alive when I'm doing this, then it's not ego driven. It's just, this is just who I am. I'm, I'm meant to be the best version of myself. There's the great line in, um, in the movie Chariots of Fire, where one of the runners, he's also a minister and his sister is telling him, you got to give up this running nonsense and focus full time on your ministry. And he says, yes, God made me a good minister. God also made me fast. And I feel God's pleasure when I run. Mm. And I just, I look at, chills every time I think of that. And it's finding that thing of, you know, if, as we clear our resistance, we're going to achieve it at the right level, it, it, whatever the most ideal level is, because we're loving ourselves. It's, it's an act of love to ourselves, as opposed to a in your face to somebody else to prove something. Yeah. Well, it flips that like achieving mentality. That's like all about the ego into fun too. Like that's what I was really feeling when you were talking about that. It makes achieving fun, you know, like achieve for myself, achieve because I want to see what I'm capable of versus yeah. like, I got to win because I got to beat so-and-so or whatever the case may be, you know? Yeah. yeah. I don't have a th over a thousand videos on YouTube because I'm trying to be the guy with the most tapping videos on YouTube. <laughs> it has, <laughs> there was never a, an attempt to, I've got to have, it's just like, oh, this would be a cool video. I think this would really help people. <laughs> It's just like, what? It's great. Totally You've got videos for everything. I'll literally be like in the middle of the night. Oh boy, I'd wake like thinking about something. I'm like, this is, I'm like, oh, I bet Brad's got a video on this. And, and inevitably you do. There's a tap for that. Um, <laughs> nerdy question. So I was taught to tap with both hands. I'm sure you get this question a lot, but you only use one. Can you, or like you only tap on one side. Can yeah. you tell us about that? The, the main reason... I mean, it's just more convenient to, to tap, but it also, because I'm a trained actor, this is bad camera technique. <laughs> you don't cover your face. <laughs> um, so for the sake of, of demonstration, I do it with my right hand. When I tap on my own, I switch back and forth or I tap with both hands at the same time. So it, it can be done that way. Yeah, I, and there are times where I, you know, when I'm leading a tapping round, I'll use both hands, but, you know, the, the meridians run up and down both sides of the body. And some people will cross over and they'll tap opposite like this. Hmm. And I always tell people, find what works for you. Yeah. There's not one right way to do it. And some people will find it, it feels better to just do it with one hand or both hands or switch back and forth. Nice. I was just curious. I've, I've, I've like, I was constantly looking in uh, your footnotes when I first found you being like, okay, it's like, I, what? Uh, anyway. Yeah. Nerdy question. Um, <laughs> so in regards to you work with people in a couple of different ways, and I'd love for you to share with us how you do that. Um, you've got some programs, you do one-on-one, -on -one, but would you share with us a little bit about how you work with folks? Yeah, happy to. I, a whole bunch of different ways. I, I do private one-on-one -on -one sessions with some folks. I have mastermind programs that are usually between four and eight participants. So over a uh, two hour, we do two hour calls and I work with everybody individually, but everyone then benefits from everybody else's tapping around because <laughs> everything's interrelated. And even if the wording seems totally irrelevant as we're tapping along, we can get benefit and find things for ourselves that we wouldn't come up with on our own. Mm -hmm. And then I have a much larger uh, group, a weekly call where, you know, upwards of hundred people might be on the call and I'll work with a few people individually, but again, everybody benefits from that. And then I have online programs that people can take advantage of whenever they choose to guiding through. And it's 
they're usually longer and, and more in depth than what I can do in a five minute YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the YouTube videos I think are fantastic. Um, great place for people to start, you know? And I know for me in the beginning, um, I was like, well, he's got this like three minute and something money tapping video. So this will be great. You know, it was like that made it easy for me to commit to sticking with it every day. It was like, I yeah. can do this and just see what happens. Then on days when I have more time. Um, but I think it's a great way for folks to just kind of, you know, put their feet in and check it out and, um, and go from there, you know, cause I know that like the more time, like your longer videos, I definitely feel a stronger shift. And so there's definitely a difference there when you're working longer. Um, and but if you can yeah. only do a few minutes and I totally understand and, and we kid ourselves, we, because we're often resisting so much things changing, even if we believe they would change for the better change is still threatening to us. And so we'll look at uh, a video that's, you know, and I got a lot of complaints from some people. It's like, your videos are too long when they're seven minutes. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm giving so much away for free. <laughs> um, but, I, but I understand that mentality because we have, this, we have this high pressure society where we don't have time, but we will spend three hours binge watching something on Netflix and we Rolling. won't allow ourselves, and, or exactly on social media, looking at things that upset us, things that don't benefit it at all, uh, we'll spend way more than seven minutes on that. But seven minutes of self-care, I don't have time for that nonsense. And it's not that we're bad or stupid. It's not that we're weak or lazy. It's just that we have programming about what's acceptable. And there is a part of us that says, yes, but if I do that, things will change and I don't feel ready to change. So I will say, I don't have time for that even though someone could watch my daily activities and go, are you kidding me? <laughs> you have time for this, but not time for that. But we're in denial about that because it feels safer where we are. Even if our lives are crap, it's our crap. We know where it goes. We handled it yesterday. We know how to handle it. I don't know if I can handle something different. So if I tap longer and it gives me more freedom to make changes in my life, oh, well, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> I, I, I mean, for me, like I was, I had given myself whenever I start to do something or commit to doing something, I always make sure that, you know, there's some wiggle room for me there so that I won't get too amped up in my head about like, oh my gosh, I have to do this thing. Um, and so I appreciated the variability, but I think for folks, like at least dipping in, you know, it will give them something to start with, but it's, it's, Yeah. <laughs> I have That's a lot whole to say idea on that the... subject, but you know, yeah. just start, just start. Cause it feels so good. And then the more you do it, the better you feel. And yes. So I want to be sure that we honor your time. And, um, I want to thank you for everything that you've shared with us. I think that you are such a wealth of information and provides so much value. And I want to say thank you so much for that. And just the work that you do, not only the difference that you've made in my life, but I know hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands more. So a lot of people watch your videos. <laughs> um, so let's dive in to the lightning round. Are you ready? All right, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm afraid I'm going to screw this up. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get the answers wrong. <laughs> the great thing is there are no wrong answers, right? Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> um, number one, what is the one habit that you can't live without? Uh, good or bad habit? <laughs> Doesn't matter. I've gotten everything from sex to meditation, <laughs> to running. To, I mean, like, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> well, I mean, the, uh, the easy answer is tapping. I, for me, it's the first thing I do in the morning. And, mm. and, and tapping can be used to enhance benefits, not just we're clearing out bad stuff. It's not that, oh, Brad taps first thing in the morning, he wakes up in a bad mood every morning. No, it's like, I want to be as open to things being as good as they can be today. So that is uh, probably the most important habit that I have. I love that. That's a... I, I, I dream intensely. So I wake up grumpy and slow sometimes. So maybe I need to work that in a little bit. 
Um, okay, number two, what does spirituality mean for you? It's that connection to something bigger than us. Uh, you know, for me, I use the word God, but I don't use God necessarily the way other people use God. We're and cool so, with that word here. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's funny if I, if I say universe in a video, people go, you need to say God. And if I say God, <laughs> people go, nah, you turned me off as soon as you said God. So it's like, All right. God is love um, on the soul driven podcast. And so yeah. whether that is Buddha to you, Jesus, Absolutely. whatever, it is yeah. all, all welcome. I, I am not talking about an old man in a white robe, yeah. um, unless that's who it is for you. And hey, go with it, Through God you. of your understanding. Yeah. Um, and knowing that a lot of people, because of past experiences, it's a trigger word. For sure. That, 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 that creates a, a block to spirituality. That's where, that's where religion and spirituality often veer off, because it can, um, ultimately, religion should be a spiritual practice, but it can get in the way for some folks. So for me, it's, it's feeling that connection to, to a higher power and doing what I can to be of, of service to, to God and my fellow human beings. I love it. Okay. Um, third question. What is your advice to anyone who is looking to find purpose? Well, I have a tapping video. <laughs> go, go look up purpose on <laughs> tap with Brad on YouTube. Uh, because there is a purpose inside of us. We, I don't think anybody shows up here without gifts to share. Uh, and if we ultimately were designed to be soul driven. And so the question is, if we're not finding our purpose is because there's roadblocks and those can be removed. <laughs> Perfect. All right, last question. It's a big one. You ready? All right. Where can people find you online? <laughs> oh, oh, I know this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> easiest way is uh, tapwithbrad.com. My website has links to, to everything else, but I'm also on most of the social media platforms as tapwithbrad. Awesome, awesome. And we will be sure to leave all of the links in the show notes so that you can find his YouTube and website and all of that very easily. Um, all right, Brad. Well, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you so pleasure, much man. for making time, coming and hanging out. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. I, this has been fun. Thank you for doing what you're doing. And thanks for allowing me this opportunity to share this work with folks. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. If you were inspired by today's interview, make sure to share it with someone, leave a review, do something cool. Be sure as well to join our email list where you can sign up to receive podcast updates and helpful resources. Thank you again so much for being here with us this week. And don't forget, when we invest in ourselves, the world benefits. Until next week. <laughs>